So any questions from the last lecture what all we discussed about this factorization theorem, how to use this factorization theorem to come up with some statistics which are sufficient and then if you know already some function is a belongs to exponential family all we need to do is write it in its uh, in this form and there all the ti functions will already give me the sufficient statistics for that okay we also discussed that sufficient statistics need not be unique there could be multiple ways of getting such sufficient statistics and if you give me one sufficient statistics i may there are multiple sufficient statistics by using some invertible function on it. Okay, then we started talking about minimal sufficient statistics. So let us repeat some of the part here what we have already done. So I am slowing myself by repeating things. If you want to further slow, you should interact or ask something related to this. Right? I mean, I am trying to incorporate the bringing the slowness by repeating things but if if you also want to do from your side you should act do not simply sit okay. So by definition we said that we are going to call a sufficient a statistic t or rather a sufficient statistic t to be minimal sufficient statistic if you have any other sufficient statistics t prime and that t primes take same value on two samples x and y then it implies that my t also takes the same value on those two samples x and y. That means if two samples are indistinguishable under sufficient statistics t then they are also indistinguishable under the sufficient statistic or minimal sufficient statistic t. Okay? Now uh, let us quickly understand this. Suppose let us say what I have written in text, let us understand that through a diagram. Let us hypothetically just make a two dimensional case so x1 and x2. Okay. Let us say this is my region for some reason. And hypothetically assume that this region gets partitioned into three parts under my hypothesis t. What I mean by that? Take any point here, let us say x1 comma x2. This is going to map, if you apply t on that, that your function t on that, it is going to give a value small t and that value t small t is the same in this region. You understand that point? All the points in this region map to the small t and similarly all the points in this also map to 1 t and like this I have made it into 3 partition. Okay? And let us call this region as A1, this region as A2 and this region as A3. So all the points in the region A1, they have the same value. Okay? When you apply T on that, they will map to the same point. Now, let us take another T prime. Sorry, let us take another statistics T prime. This is another statistics. So let us call this is T and let us call let us do another partition under this, this is under t prime. Not necessary that this t prime will also result in the same partition. It may result in some other partition, let us call that as simply like this. Okay, under this, let us call this a1 prime and let us call this a2 prime and let us call this a3 prime. Okay, in fact, it may result in more than three partitions it may have more, more than 3 or maybe less than 3 whatever. I am just for representation purpose, I am just writing it as 3. Now, suppose t prime is a sufficient statistic
let's assume that and let's call the point to which all these maps here as called let's call t1 prime let's call this as t2 prime and let's call all the value it maps to all the points in this region maps to as t3 prime and similarly here that is called t1 and this is t2 and let's call this t3 now if from this region i have all the points gets either mapped to t1 prime t2 prime or t3 prime okay now arbitrarily let's pick t2 prime and let's take some point let's 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 know i know let's some point here let's some point let's call this point some x again that consists of x1 and x2 let's say this t1 prime x maps to t2 prime okay in fact all the points in this region are going to map to t2 prime now this region let's call this whatever this uh, where this t2 to belongs let's call this a2 prime i know that all these points here in this region they are all getting mapped to the same value of t2 point now if i look into this portion here will they also under t will they also map to the same point not necessarily no, not say map to the same point same as t2 prime but all their values will be same if t happens to be minimal sufficient statistic so all these points are taking same values let's say any any point you take x and y here they are going to take the same value here but if t is a sufficient statistic by definition they should also be taking the same value right so all these points that are here they are also taking the same value under t even though i have partitioned incorrectly it's not necessary so then there should be region here in under t which incorporates all these points right some region here which incorporates all these points that are mapped to the same value under t prime and that's what we are saying so this region here which has become a partition this is going to be a subset of another partition under t maybe ideally i should have uh, drawn this like this it would have been if if i have to draw this first figure with respect to this this should have been this maybe this like this uh, not even this maybe this with this and this so how many partition it got now so this has 1 2 3 1 2 3 and here i want it to have only yeah maybe i even don't need this only this much now it has only two partitions right in this actually all these points are also here and that is now incorporated in a bigger partition it's just like a representation so if this happens to be sorry here it uh, i call him b here right in this set i'm calling them as b b1 b2 and b3 so this b2 prime here is going to be part of a2 a2 here just by this definition that if t is a sufficient statistic every point that are mapping to the same they should also be mapping to the same value under my t okay so so obviously the number of partition under minimal sufficient statistics 
is going to be large or small compared to another sufficient statistics? It is going to be smaller, right? Right? If this is some sufficient statistics, we saw that it is going to partition my space into three. But if t is sufficient statistics, the number of partition it is going to have is going to smaller than this. So in this way, among all the statistics, which statistics is going to partition your space into small number of subsets? Minimal sufficient statistic. Okay, so this example we also discussed last time. Suppose we have a samples which are drawn from Gaussian distribution with parameter mu and sigma square with unknown mean mu and known parameter sigma square. So my only thing that is unknown to me is mu. Now I know that sample mean is going to be a sufficient statistic. Now if I am going to take another sufficient statistic, another statistic will actually come consist of two components, sample mean as well as sample variance. Now actually this is also be sufficient statistics because every information, all the information about my parameter mu is contained in this. And in fact, I can ignore x, s square and s bar I can just written which already you know is a sufficient statistics for mu. But I know that t1 is a function of t2, right? If you give me T2, by just a dropping a second component, I can recover T1, right? Now, even though both these statistics or sufficient statistics contain same amount of information about my unknown parameter mu, T1 is a, offers me a better reduction, okay? So because of that, it compresses information better. That should also give a kind of intuition that why the number of partitions is less under minimal st sufficient statistics compared to a just an ordinary sufficient statistics, okay? Okay, so now how to find minimal sufficient statistics? How to test a sufficient statistics is a minimal sufficient statistic. So first of all, we started, okay, statistics is any function that is fine. Check whether something is a sufficient statistic, that was not obvious, but we come up with a method. What was our method to check whether a stat statistic is sufficient statistic? Yeah? So one thing was factorization theorem, which is give a for sufficient necessary condition for something to be sufficient statistic. And uh, if we have to just uh, do simply verify whether something is a sufficient statistics, we had some other thing also, right? That ratio test we had. See whether the ratio of uh, unconditional distribution and uh, of your samples and uh, unconditional distribution of your uh, statistics is independent of theta. So now we have minimum sufficient statistics, something more than sufficient statistics, right? How to test that? So for that, we have this result, which again gives some complete characterization because it is giving both sufficient and necessary conditions. So what it says is, suppose, okay, let's say, f of x by theta is your population density. Now, if there exists a statistic t such that you take any pair, any pair x and y, two samples, random samples, and if it so happens that the ratio of the PDFs at those two points x and y happens to be constant, when I say constant here, independent of x, sorry, independent of theta here, the parameter, okay, there are only two 
three things, right, that are x, y and theta here. When I say it is a constant, it is independent of theta. This is going to be constant if and only if on if those two points x and y are such that my statistics gives the same value on those two points. Okay? If this is the case, then my t is going to be a minimum sufficient statistics. Okay, first before we will just briefly discuss this proof. Anybody has any difficulty in understanding this statement or uh, interpreting this statement? What does this mean? What he is saying is, okay, you give me a statistic and what I am going to do is I take two points, two random points and check the ratio of these two points, uh, check the PDF at these two points. If this is independent of theta provided on these two points t of x equals to ty, only then it should happen. If this is going to be independent of theta on points x and y where t of x is not equal to t of y, then you are failing this statement. Okay? If that is the case, then t is going to be a minimal sufficient statistic. 